Recording in progress. Hello, I'm Pamela Vines and I own Vines Film and Media. Vines Film and Media announced that we are going to do one webinar every month, always on the second Thursday at 2 p.m. And it's a short webinar, approximately 30 minutes, maybe more, and then leaving room at the end for Q&A. So we had the first one and I wanted to do a critique, but there were some challenges that I must address and, and must um, go on for, for the next one. So first of all, I want to thank all of you who, who did sign on, who did come and attend. It just means a lot that you would take time out of your working day and sign on to hear my webinar, which was Let There Be Light, Eight Ways to Light Your Videos. So that leads to challenge number one. Challenge number one in this critique of the webinar was that I changed the platform. So I started out with using a platform called Webinar Genie. But um, then after I sent out everything, I read the fine print and found out that you can only use 20 minutes in the free mode. So all of that, I ended up on my own platform, my own webinar platform that can host up to 100 people. eight ways to light your videos. All right, so here's our agenda for today. We just have a, a few things to go over. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and the, the work our company does, and then we'll jump right in and go through the one through eight, answer any questions. And, and look at me wearing the same color palette. I do really like this gold color, don't I? All right, so who am I? So I am Pamela Hart Vines and I own Vines Film and Media, and we've been creating film and video for the past five years. And so my filmmaking journey did not begin in film school. So I went to the military right after college, and then I spent the next 20 years as an army officer traveling around and working primarily in the army public affairs career field. And then when I retired from the army, I got into working as a defense consultant and I did a lot of strategic communications work, but that was a lot of restrictive uh, environment for me. So I wanted to use my creativity and I really wanted to spread my wings and, and do the things I wanted to do. So I left that, that comfortable environment, that good uh, government check. And then uh, I stepped out on faith to start my own business. And so what does the word say? Faith without works is dead. And so was my income, but that's okay because uh, I started the business as Troop Public Relations and and Vine, and then added on Vines Film. And with Troop Public Relations, even though I was a, a public relations practitioner, uh, I'd worked in the military, you know, doing this day to day, every day for ten years, have a lot of experience. I just really wasn't successful in in relaying that to potential clients. But what really brought everybody on board is when I got excited about video production. And that's when I went to my next networking um, event and they went around the room and said, you know, what do you do? I stood up and said, I make videos, which wasn't a stretch because I did use in my, in my model of, of Troop PR, we used uh, video production in doing mock interviews for crisis communications and media training. So I had the equipment, I had the eye, I have the creativity, so I just put that all together and went out on faith and got my first real client that day. So never looked back since. And so what do we do at Troop Public Relations and Vines Film? So we, we focus on four areas, actually. So we do video production. We are a corporate video production company, and we primarily make videos for business owners and influencers. And we also... In, in addition to that, we our capabilities have extended through doing aerial video and photography. So if someone is, like, say, for instance, a realtor uh, wants to do an aerial video of um, a home that he or she is about to put on the market, or a um, this is always popular for wedding videos because you want to do the establishing shot of the venue and just really creative shots of the bride and groom walking uh, in their favorite environment. So we do a lot of aerial, aerial video and we just got a new drone, uh, a cinema drone. So it's, it's fabulous. And then another thing we do is event live streaming. We um, can uh, live stream weddings, 
uh, for because people are now having shorter and smaller venues, but they really want to extend their reach and have family across the waters, you know, across the country, uh, look at and be able to participate. So we have up, we can do upwards of four camera views to invite people into your event. And it's actually a better viewing experience than actually being there with the four different cameras because we broadcast it going from one camera to the other. So it's a lot of fun. And then the last thing we do, uh, we produce short films and documentaries. And we, we write, produce, direct, and film and distribute these films. We've done two full-length documentaries and two short films over the past two years. So I've been very, very busy. So just quickly taking a look at the team, um, I'm, I'm, I own the company. And then we have Maya. She does a, a lot of writing and a, a little bit of editing. Sherman is our drone master. Gary is my main um, videographer. Uh, Anissa is one of my creatives, a lot of doing a lot of writing. And then Keston is also a videographer, very experienced. Um, um, he has the most experience of all of us, over 10 years of filming. So it, it's a really good team this year and we're excited. So what does light do? Light, we work to create light for others as we naturally light our own way in the world. And I think that's a perfect quote to get us started because light is everything. Lighting provides us with, it provides the viewers to your project an insight into what they should expect. It creates the mood, the atmosphere, and just really, uh, if you're an expert at lighting, you can really do that. You can make, make your videos sing. And so what we do, um, our vision mission just quickly is to, we want to inspire positive change and meaningful action worldwide through film. That's our, our vision and our mission every day is to work with um, uh, businesses to help engage their markets and their stories and culture. So all of that and then is eight minutes in, I talked about, I launched into the eight ways to light your video, which gives me a good 20 minutes to talk about each one of them. And again, this was an overview. It wasn't any detailed instruction. You can do, you know, a whole webinar on each one of these. But I just wanted to give you an overview in case there were some different ways that you hadn't considered in, in lighting your own videos. And we're just going to dive in and talk about the first one is natural light. And the benefit of using natural light is that you know, it, it is free. You know, the, it's everywhere. It's constant because you're going to wake up every day. God willing, there will be light. And so the, the challenge is to maneuver that light so that it works for us. The natural light just brings out the person's natural essence. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's not a cover up. And so when we do the corporate video, of course, we want to convey our, I want our customers, our clients to convey to their customers what their real deal is, that they're not trying to um, uh, mislead. So I like the natural light because uh, subliminally the natural is natural, putting everybody, everything above board and respecting truly what the business is about. First of all, the cons about using it is that light changes every day. And it, it changes by the minute. You know, I'm in a well-lit room. However, I'm still having to use a ring light because the, um, the sky is cloudy. So if, if we were outside in an environment, that, that would be good because in a quiet environment because the clouds act as a natural diffuser and diffuse. And you know the sun is up there shining brightly, but because the clouds are there, uh, the, the, cloud, the, the sun is... Um, um, diffused through the clouds and it, it's not blaring. And that's, that's one of the things that you have to be careful about and, and consider when you want to do a video using natural light is um, the time of day you're going to film. So not only the time of day, but the weather. So let's talk about the, the time of day. If either it's going to have to be very early in the morning, one hour before the sun comes up, and this is the golden hour, either one hour before the sun comes up or one hour before the sun goes down. So you're going to have to get up and get prepped, get your makeup on and clothes and get on in position and, and film at least between, depending on daylight savings time, around uh, 7 a.m. Probably that's the sweet spot. 
or in the evening, we're looking at filming about uh, 5 p.m. And so when, as for clients, very few people want to get up that early and be prepped. So, you know, doing outside uh, productions is always a challenge. However, there is a lot of equipment you can come and you can use to augment the bright sun if you do have to film later in the day, in the afternoon, and so forth. But, you know, we can talk about that later. I, you know, you'll definitely have my contact information at the end so I can go and talk to you specifically about those techniques about how to diffuse the light if the clouds aren't cooperating. But, but those are the most things, those are things about being outside. And if you're filming inside, the other con is that some of us have day jobs. You, you may work a nine to five and you're doing video production to support your, your side hustle or your business, business that you truly want to be your main job of, of you know, your, your career, what working within your passion. So after that, you know, when you come home and after you do your nine to five, sometimes people do a five to nine and PM and then it, it's dark. And so you can't stand by the window and do natural light. And so in those cases, we have to move on to artificial light. And artificial light and, and all of the rest of the things we're going to talk about are artificial light. So moving on to artificial light. So the industry uses three-point lighting. That's the industry standard for lighting um, yourself and, and a scene. So what, what exactly is three-point lighting? So, you know, here, here is just a, a quick snapshot. And I got this from uh, No Film School for, for brevity and convenience. Okay, so you have the subject here in the middle. And um, then at about 45 degrees away from the subject is the key light. And the key light is it's the primary or, or the brightest sort of light in your three-point light setup. And so it gives the, the main overall exposure to setting up the, the, the subject, to, to lighting a person's face. And it's normally, again, at a 45 degree angle to the camera. And so this, this creates um, shadows on the opposite side of the subject's face. And that's where you give a lot of dimension and depth. So if you shine light like directly in front of yourself, it may flatten you out. And, it, and your face won't have any depth. I was watching a clip on uh, the news this morning uh, because you know everybody on the news is now using um, using Zoom and so forth because that's now acceptable since we've had the COVID. But the newscaster was completely washed out. She her, she was overexposed. Uh, you could not discern between her nose and her eyes and her mouth. It was just one one blob actually. Poor thing. So um, that's why we want to position the light at an angle. So you do create some element of depth with a little bit of shadows that gives it a more cinematic look. Okay, so the next thing um, with the, aside from the key light, is the fill light. And you see, this is a little uh, grayed out because it's, it's the secondary source to the light, to the key light. And it, it's not... Um, because you, unless you are creating a film or a piece where you really want that stark, you know, lighted on one side of your face and then darkened shadows on the other side, unless you're doing something like that, which isn't advisable for a promotional video or just talking to your, your, your audience on a day-to-day -day basis, I would recommend using that fill light because it cancels out a lot of the shower uh, shadows but still leaves a little bit of the depth. So you want the fill light. And then the, the third aspect of the three-point lighting system is lighting your the backlight, you know, and putting the light in um, so it's behind the subject and it lights up your hair a little bit. And then it gives you a separation between your background and yourself. Again, creating that depth and giving you a little bit of a cinematic look. So that is um, the industry standard for three-point lighting. And, and that's the main thing. So if you're going to use 
artificial light, if you can't be outside, if you can't position yourself by a window and, and you're going for optimum value, um, do your best to do the three-point lighting system. I did go into a lot of detail on the first two, the natural lighting and the three-point lighting. Those are primarily what most people use anyway to light their videos. Um, and that is background lights. When you have the three-point light system, uh, sometimes you, you have a background. And so my background here in my office is, is pretty lit. But if it were 9 p.m., I might use another source of light behind me just, again, so I wasn't, you weren't seeing this uh, dark, um, really um heavily dark area behind me, it's lit a little bit. And sometimes people add some blue light behind the person to, again, create that depth and give it more interesting, a uh, more interesting look. So those are background lights. They also help set the mood. So now we're looking at low light. And then and, if you want um, to get more creative, I, of uh, I then candle talked about way using to, to light your project. low light and candlelight, which um, is an interesting way, depending this, on the kind this, of uh, outlook you want for your videos all depends on the mood you're trying to create for your videos and there's a little hint this this production person has put some blue light behind her you know because it's you know i can tell as a as a filmmaker it's it's artificial and it's giving the illusion that all the light in the room is coming from these candles and even though you may use candlelight and it does add a nice piece you would still need to augment that with other lights. And again, you know, we can talk about that. If, if this is the kind of video that you want to create, I can help walk you through, you know, where to place other lights. So to make, to make that, um, to, to get that look you're trying to achieve. Okay. So those are one through four and now moving on to five through eight. So car lights, and uh, these are halogen lights, and I just think that this is another way, if you're going to film outside, especially a, a lot of people use these when they're making music videos, but it really has a dramatic feel. So, you know, here's a woman who's sitting on a pier, definitely um, her car or truck is coming uh, equally at her. And then here's and one using car headlights. Who would ever think about that? This is maybe an overcast day. It's an overcast day, but I would estimate that this is about six or 7 p.m. in the evening. So I, I do really like this look and um, I just got a smoke machine because I want to do a lot more of this um, coming through the, the car headlights, through the smoke, um, walking down the street. That's one of the next videos that I want to create. And you know, so I'm really going to use that. Okay. So we're well, looking at uh, number six, dome lights, professional grade. And so the industry standard is the aperture brand and, and i talked about the professional I lighting that have, i, do not I have use this. with the big i want this hood. this but this i have the aperture 120 d mark ii which also does a lot of the same things this is just the upgraded version it, you can um lower the light there you you can manipulate the light to do a lot of different things you can strobe it you can give the effect of someone watching television um of blinds uh, someone, you can just manipulate this light with this this device, this lighting system here. And of course, this does not come with the soft box. You'd have to buy another uh, a soft box to go over the light, and that helps to just like the clouds diffuse the light and and really encompass your whole person, which mimics the natural light because natural light is our goal that you know, every, every de other device wants to mimic that, that effect of looking like natural, looking natural from the natural light. So this is one of the ones, if you want to um, do, invest in this kind of um, equipment, you know, I, I can walk you through and, and maybe give you a demo of the lights that I use. And um, ring lights. Ring lights are great for our day-to-day -day videos. So currently, you know, this is a. I talked about ring a, lighting. Um, view I'm using right now. You're seeing me do right now. That so this, I was I'm using during the desk. webinar. This is the light that I have shining on me right now. Um, you know, this this is the uh, my audio device, but we're we're not looking at that now. But my ring light is set. It's also at positioned at a 45 degree angle, and that is to augment these windows 
that don't bring a lot of light in right now, but, and you can get varying sizes of ring lights. Um, you know, this, this is a pretty large one. It's on a tri it's on its own, um, stand tripod, but you have desk ring lights. You even have uh, smaller ring lights that can just go right on your, um, your, uh, tablet devices or your phone. And, uh, I just ordered one of those. So those, you know, you, ring lights are, are great. And, uh, you know, they do the trick because the purpose of them in their shape of it being round is that it's going to diffuse the light. So it's not just like a little mini, a mini spotlight shining on you, creating shadows. Uh, this um, shares the light and uh, distributes it more evenly, which is um, a purpose of the, 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 um, bo the light boxes. Where's the light box? Oh gosh, here it is way down here. Um, I meant to show this earlier. This is um, what another three point lighting system that's extremely affordable. And uh, this would give you the um, back. This would give you the, this larger one on top would give you the um, hair light or the, the backlight. Um, one of these uh, would give you the key light and then the fill light. So you can you position these around the room as, as you see fit. But, you know, this with the soft box and the larger the soft box, the better it is because it helps, again, distribute the light. So you don't have just, just one stream of light coming at you. So uh, I, I have these. I just uh, got these from Amazon. Uh, I, I do have these. I have a um, um, many a light set because we've been, been doing these this for a couple of years now. But... Uh, I, I use these. I use um, primarily the Aperture 120 D Mark II for my uh, primary light set with clients. And um, finally, post production, if all else fails, and you do everything you can to. And then, light of course, I round it out with, with post production um, lighting. You know, all of the things we just talked about. I don't, I don't recommend you using this as your first resort, but you can adjust in post-production. So this is a, a screenshot of my editing page that I have on my screen right now. And here is where you can um, raise the exposure and lift up the lights or you can lower it. Uh, you can add uh, uh, saturation and color. So you can do a lot of things um, as a last resort in post-production. So I you know I, I I've worked with a few people that we've been on set with clients and they say, oh, don't worry about it. We can fix it in post-production. And I really don't like that. And um I don't like to work with people who who want to depend on fixing things in post-production because the the primary goal is to fix everything, do everything you can at the onset, and then fine-tune it in post-production. And in that way you have the best looking video that you can possibly do. So just as, as a recap, um, the eight ways, natural light, always my favorite, uh, it, but it's not always available and not always cooperative. So you have to defend, depend on the artificial light, which the three point light, four point lights with the background, you can do low light, uh, um, go outside, experiment with candles, car lights, uh, you can invest into a regular dome light. And of course, the ring lights are, are always there um, and very affordable to help set your mood, light your face when you're on Zoom meetings and also when you're doing video, short video productions. And, and then we round out with the post-production, which as does, does take some um, uh, experience, but we, you know, we, we can do that. If you're getting to a point where, you know, you want to just hand over all of your editing um, projects to a digital video company, um, we, for instance, do digital editing to help uh, fix those things at a, at a nominal rate. So those are the kinds of things we do. And um, just quickly, uh, well, here, here we are. If you want to contact me again, you'll still see True Public Relations because we are doing business as Vines Film and Media. So there is a transition going on in our business right now, but we the, the phone number and the email are currently still working. And there's my Instagram account at Pamela Hart Vines. You can always see what I'm up to on Instagram or LinkedIn. 
And um, just, uh, I wanted to say, I really appreciate all of you coming here today. Um, we're just at 2.30, right before we jump into questions. But, you know, while I'm on a roll, I wanted to offer something just for you. So for everybody on the line today, you know, if you wanted to uh, talk, book a call and have us talk to you about any, any services that any digital editing services, any full production services that you have in mind. If you do decide to book before next Thursday, you would just be able to use the code LIGHTME2022. And you can even share this with uh, people in your network and your friends and family, and they would be available to get this special deal as well over the next week. So, so let's, I'm going to stop the share. So next month again these are going to be every second thursday of the month on this platform so every second um, month and next next uh, month in february uh what day is that february 10th is when we'll do this uh, next session and we are going to talk about audio because audio was always a a bane of my existence especially on my first documentary so i learned a lot um, trial error by fire um, in getting um, audio. So a lot, lots of different ways you can uh, ensure that people hear you because people will watch your video, even if it's a little blurry or a little dark, but if they cannot hear you, they are going to click that button and um, end your, your video before you can shake a stick. All right. So if there are no further questions, um, you can contact me uh, at, let me just type my email address just to make it convenient for you. It's Pamela at troopr.com, double O double P R. Uh, again, that's from Troop Public Relations. And you know, I was, a, I'm a veteran. So I named the company after an homage to service members. So that's what the troop is, Troop Public Relations. All right, so I am going to end this, and I really appreciate you taking this time out this afternoon to be with us here to talk about eight ways to light your video, and I look forward to seeing you on all of our social media pages on LinkedIn. Please connect me, with me there, and um, Instagram, and of course, here next month on February 10th. Thank you again for participating in the first webinar or watching the replay or watching this critique of the replay. I am Pamela Vines with Vines Film and Media.